Okay, a couple people are having some trouble with the circuits lab, so I'm going to make another one. I want to walk you through the parallel circuit, and I also want to bring up the um, schematic so that maybe you can connect what is happening on the breadboard over here with what is going on with the schematic. Okay, so our schematic here has three resistors, and what you want to pay attention to is how the end of these resistors are connected together, okay? So here's the leads that are kind of sticking off of those resistors, and let's just think about how those are connected. So the tops, those are all connected together, and they're all connected to, let's say, the positive side of the battery. And then the bottom of these leads, those are also, see how they're all connected together? This is, it's all the same wire down here, and these are all connected to the negative side. So that's the main idea, is just take each component and look at how one component is connected to the next. So when you see this bar along the entire top, okay, that's telling you that all of these little ends of all of these resistors, they're all connected together into the same row. Okay, and then same with the bottom. So all of these little leads at the bottom are connected together at the same row. So let's just, the easiest way to put resistors in parallel is just to choose two rows that are already all the way together with one another and then just put those guys in two rows. So here we go. We've got our breadboard. We've got a power supply. And let's just put the power supply on the side somewhere. And we have three resistors. And we'll go through hooking these up to measure the voltage across them and also hooking them up to measure the current. So for resistors in parallel, because the top and the bottom are all connected to one another, the voltage will be the same, but we'll get different currents through each one. Okay, so the easiest way is to just pick a row and everybody is going to be connected together at one side. Let me see how much I can zoom in. Okay, so everybody on the top is connected together. See that? And we can connect him over to our red power supply. I'm going to make this wire red so that we know this is positive. And the electrons come in here, and they have a choice. They can go through door number one, door number two, or door number three. So they empty out of this top row into the three resistors. And then on the other side, what we're doing is we're going from here all the way down to ground. So they have to go through one of those resistors to make it through ground. So hopefully that looks very similar to what was on our wiring diagram. So let me just bring that wiring diagram over here again. So it looks pretty similar, right? You've got three resistors here. Those are your three resistors here. And you have all the tops that are wired together. And the tops are wired together, and they're plugged into the battery up here. And then the bottoms are all wired together, too. And those are all plugged into the battery as well. So you really can take these wiring schematics and translate them directly onto the, what's happening on the breadboard over here. OK, to measure voltage on here, voltage is measured in parallel. So what we have here, I'll go ahead and rotate him around. OK, so our negative lead is just going to be parallel here. So I can put it in this side. And it's a good, good idea to actually color your wires for what they go to. And then you can, it's just more clear what's going with what. OK, so here we are. We're just, we're in parallel with those other resistors. It's like you're putting another resistor right here in a row. Okay, so then if I start the simulation, now what I had going in here was a 9-volt battery, and 
it doesn't matter where I measure the voltage, okay? So I can measure it across the first or the second or the third resistor. The tops are all connected to one another and the bottoms are all connected to ground. So we're going from the same potential either way you, you look at it. So it doesn't, it's the same voltage drop across each of those resistors for these guys in parallel. I'm going to stop the simulation and this time we're going to connect our wires in order to measure current. Now to measure current, that means I have to come over here to my multimeter and say I'm going to measure amps. Current is in amps. And you can see the little A. To measure current, we're going to actually have to break our circuit across. So the, the connections on the rows for this breadboard, they're not connected across this middle area here. Okay, so I just took this resistor away from everybody else. And what it's going to do is it's going to have to actually, and maybe I'll move this resistor over here so it's a little bit more clear. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come into here and then up to our multimeter. This is, we're going to have to crisscross wires here, sorry. And then it's going to go through the multimeter and then out to the last resistor. But this, this other guy isn't connected to anybody, right? So he's going to have to be connected over here, too. Okay, so now if we run the simulation, we're getting amps instead of volts, okay? And if I change the resistance on our resistor, if you get a large resistor, it should give us, so instead of 1 kilo ohm, let's say 1,000 kilo ohms or 100 Okay, so before we had what, like 9 milliamps, and this time, since we changed, this is a big resistor compared to the other two. Well, if it's big, nobody wants to go through it, so that means if we start the simulation, okay, we're not at milliamps anymore. We're at micro, so we've changed an order of magnitude here because of the size of our resistors, I guess two orders of magnitude. Okay, so you can, this is the current that would have to be going through this resistor before it goes back to ground. So to measure current, you have to actually break apart the connection, and it's going to go through your multimeter and then into the piece. So you have to, it's, it's in series with it. And voltage you measure in parallel. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense for how the wiring diagram translates to what is happening on your breadboard. And you're going to take this thing and look at the legs. Okay, so one other thing. Let's, let's go ahead and let me snip one of these transistor circuits over here. Okay, and let's just talk about what is happening on this transistor circuit. Where are the transistors on here? Well, the transistors are these, these black lines on here. Okay, so there's a black line, and that is the transistor. So the transistor has three wires coming out of it, and they have the three wires coming out at different angles. Really, the transistor, all the wires are like this coming out of it. But these three wires over here, that's the three wires coming out of the transistor, and you just want to make sure that the collector is going to be on the top, the emitter is going to be on the bottom, and the base, this little guy going into the base, that's what controls if the switch is open or not. Okay, so if there's something coming into the base, that means the collector and the emitter are connected. It's like there's a wire there. If there's nothing coming into the base, then the collector and the emitter, it's like there's no wire. There's no way to get through. So nothing is going to come, come through that transistor. So it, it's a switch, right? So it's on, and electrons can flow from the, from the collector to the emitter, 
or it's off and you can't get from the collector to the emitter. So just walk through these, these circuits and think about what the different scenarios are, right? <clears throat> so A and B. If A is zero and B is zero, what's going to happen? Well, if A is zero, that means this is a no-go. And B is zero, that means this is a no-go. And that means there's no way for the, the voltage at the top to get through. So that would be a zero over here, too. Okay, so let's go through another piece of this truth table. What if A is zero and B is one? What would that constitute? So if A is zero, that means nothing is getting through this transistor. But if B is one, that means, yay, everybody can come over here. It can go through this transistor and get out. Okay, so zero, one, there's a route for it to take that it can, it can get out this way. So this is going to be a one coming out for that scenario. Okay, let's walk through another one here. So let's say we have one and then zero. So if A is one and B is zero, then what route is it going to take? Okay, so if B is zero, if there's nothing coming into that gate, that means you can't get through this, this way. And then A is one, so that means, yay, we can get through this route. So one, zero goes to one. It's not going to go this way, but it can go over here. So this one over here, what this is called is an OR gate. And think about why they named it that. So one or the other or both of them. It can get through both ways for both of them. Okay, the only way that we're not going to have anything with an OR gate is for zero, zero scenario. Okay, so hopefully that helped you guys. And take, yeah, just take this circuit and look at the, the wires coming out of each component. So how is the transistor wired on here? Okay, so, so here's, here's the transistor. has an N on it. Okay, that transistor has three leads coming off. So what are you going to do with those with those three leads? Well, one of them, the base, this is what's going into the transistor, okay? So you're going to either open or close the connection between those two guys based on what is coming into the center, into the base. So you'll have one resistor going into the base, and then for the top and the bottom, you're going to have your positive side coming into the top and then coming out of the base we want to see if it makes it through here so is it going to make it all the way through this thing or not so we can put a little LED on the bottom here right so if it makes it through it'll light up the LED and we can see yay it made it through there so all you're going to do is you're going to wire one side of it so that it's going to go through a resistor and then the resistor is going to feed through an LED. It's just hooking up little segments of pipe to one another. So go back to that water analogy. You're just making a path, a little pipe for the electrons to flow through. And they're going to have to flow through a resistor. They're going to have to flow through the LED. And then this is going to ground. This is, have to make that into the black wire. Okay. So eventually you have to connect it to the black part of your battery, the ground. Okay, so hopefully, sorry for all the scribbling. Send me a picture. If you're getting really stuck, take a picture of your circuit and just text it over to me, and I'll help you. So I'll say, oh, you still need a little black wire next to your red, black, brown resistor or something. So it's sometimes it's hard to kind of walk your way around and see what's not connected and what... But just start at the beginning of the thing, okay? Start at the red side and walk through the loop. So 
you're you're going on this journey you start at the red side you make a right turn and then you can go over here you can go over here you know come up through the so just kind of trace the paths that are happening for the tubes that you're connecting on here to think through all of this and if you make it through this stuff you'll be awesome in physics too electricity and magnetism and you'll do great in circuits too if you end up taking circuits and this is just Every engineer should know the basics of, you know, electricity and how to wire some, some simple circuits on here because sooner or later, it doesn't matter who you are, you're going to end up having to make something like this. So, okay, hope that helped you guys.